So good morning. Uh, it's good to see everyone. It's good to be together again uh, here for distance worship. We welcome you to Fairview United Methodist Church uh, Library. It is good to see everyone. We thank you for being with us uh, from a distance, and uh, we hope that your heart will be blessed by our worship today. Let's pray. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for this day, for the beauty of the world that surrounds us, for the opportunity to gather here for each person that is in this place. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would open our hearts and our minds, renew us, refresh us by the power of the Holy Spirit, enable us, equip us, and empower us as you recharge us as we hear your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 35, through chapter 10, verse 8. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven is come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, Cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Twelve is one of those uh, rare numbers to which people have for centuries attributed special significance. We give a special name for twelve. We call it a dozen. More interestingly, for us, it is very significant, this number in the Bible. Believe it or not, the number 12 is used around 187 times in the Old and New Testaments. Think about the 12 minor prophets of the Old Testament. Jacob's 12 sons. The 12 tribes of Israel. 12 governors of Israel appointed by Solomon. And Revelation's tree of life producing 12 fruits. And, of course, the twelve disciples become apostles. Jesus' primary followers were an unusual group. Somewhat like the Dirty Dozen, soldiers in a 1967 movie by that very name, based on a true story and framed against the World War II D-Day invasion, it portrays a special military operation designed to kill high-ranking Nazi officers. The American High Command ordered an unorthodox officer to select 12 men, a 12-man squad 
for a mission with a very high probability of failure and the likely death of most of the combatants. Surprisingly, the officer did not go after the best soldiers in his outfit, but instead visited uh, military prisons. Among those he chose were thieves, murderers, you might as well say scoundrels. The commander took them apart and molded them into an effective team. Later, the wisdom of his selecting this dirty dozen, as it was called, became clear as their criminal skills proved perfect for the demands of this risky mission. In the end, this highly unlikely ragtag band of brothers got the job done, and the audience cheered the demise of a dreaded enemy. Of course, it would, be, it would not be appropriate to affirm the behavior of criminals, but the story presents an interesting plot, just, just some interesting thoughts about a dozen men whom the world did not regard with honor. In fact, society had cast them aside. They seemed ill-suited for such a, a cri critically important task. However, as the story goes, in the right situation, with a unique sort of guidance, they became heroes in the midst of an assignment that demanded an unconventional solution. Another unconventional leader, in a more extraordinary era, called together his own remarkable dozen to take on the most momentous mission of all time. This story that we tell in our gospel lesson today, it's not about a dirty dozen, but about an equally unique and unorthodox dozen. When Jesus picked out his twelve, he obviously did not demand a substantial set of qualifications. He didn't seem to care whether they had unusual spiritual insight or proven ability. And if you really think about it, Jesus didn't seek out the best. Jesus did not seek out the brightest. Jesus sought out the ordinary. He selected a group of mostly lackluster and untested common people, some of whom the world had already cast aside as failures, especially failures by modern worldly standards. One was young and inexperienced. Some were anything but exceptional fishermen. In fact, probably unexceptional fishermen. Many grew up in the rocky upland region of Galilee. One was a fanatical Jewish nationalist. Several argued themselves, uh, argued among themselves who was the greatest disciple. Matthew he was a despised tax collector. Peter denied even knowing Jesus when the chips were down. And then there was Judas, the betrayer. It's hard to avoid concluding that Jesus wanted for his dozen um, people who were not special. He picked 12 ordinary people. 12 ordinary people. No particular qualifications. No thoughts that they might transform the world. Still, Jesus trusted them. And he entrusted them with the opportunity to spread the kingdom of God. He sent them out to do the very work he had been doing himself. And for them to continue after he was gone. The mission on which Jesus sent his twelve was at least as risky 
as that of the Dirty Dozen. He described it in a familiar imagery as going out like sheep in the midst of wolves. He warned them of the likelihood of their being flogged and, and dragged before governors and kings as a result of accepting Jesus' call to mission in the most frightening of Jesus' warnings to his dozen. He suggested that the field of spiritual battle would be one in which brother will betray brother to death and a father, his child, and children will rise against their parents and have them put to death. And others would hate them for following Jesus. Now maybe Jesus just knew better than to invite experienced leaders or experienced examples. He needed down-to-earth vulnerable, and ordinary people. A kind of dozen who were representative of the general population and understood their own pain and fears. Furthermore, who else would have had the courage or uh, would have been naive enough or foolish enough, you might say, to join such a band of brothers on such a dangerous mission. The important lesson for today is that we Christians of the 21st century, well, we're the current dirty dozen, or the current dozen, you might say. We're the dozen for Jesus in contemporary times. Of course, the dangers we face are seldom as dramatic as those faced by Jesus' apostles. Still, remaining faithful in following Jesus reminds um, that there's a big old task there, a great big task in front of us. But there is hope. Hope. Hope because we bear significant resemblance to the commonplace apostles. In most small and average-sized congregations, carrying out this work begins with a group of lay members who may not believe that they have superlative qualifications. Like Jesus first dozen. But like the apostles, they can rise to the occasion. They can meet the needs of the people, whatever they might be. So our ordinariness is not a hindrance unless we let it be, unless we choose to make it so. Who among Jesus' dozen was really suited to carry out God's work? Think about it. Who among Jesus' dozen was really suited to carry out the work of God? And who among us is qualified to proclaim the gospel to an unbelieving world and share God's love in action among those around us? Who in any generation is qualified to heal a broken world in Jesus' name? And yet, like the fictitious dirty dozen of the movie from 1967, We can find courage. We can find courage. And like Jesus' original dirty dozen, we can find courage. And the wherewithal to accept the command to follow Jesus into ministry in our own generation, in our own times, Think about this. Who among us, for example, could have felt qualified
to face this unprecedented challenge posed by the coronavirus. Sequestered in our homes at a time of physical separation of the body of Christ. Nevertheless, in church after church after church and community after community after community and time after time after time, unqualified and untrained people rose to the occasion and accepted the hard mission to provide remarkable closeness filled with love. It's all about love. But maybe we should have expected this development because throughout Christian history, the dozen apostles have been replaced by a never-ending series of other dozens who continue to carry out the never-ending instructions of Jesus to go out among the people as his agents, agents of love. Chip Webb said, agents of the Almighty. Every one of us is empowered to do so. Not because of our abilities, not because of our readiness, but because of the Holy Spirit that came to us on Pentecost. In the 1967 uh, movie, the officer in the World War II drama and, and Jesus in the first century saw in their dozens a potential those folks could not see in themselves. The church recognizes this. We know this. Baptism puts us on, our salvation and our baptism puts us on level ground. But the nature of our baptism, we have been authorized, we have been called to be disciples in the same way as the first dozen. God's perspective is that we, what needs doing in the world requires ordinary people. Ordinary people like you and me, like, like most of us. God's work requires the very experiences we have had at work, at school, at play, at raising a family, or doing whatever is our fun thing to do. Any activity can be used to help others. God needs you today. God needs today's dozen to utilize a great variety of gifts and skills and experiences to carry out a task no less daunting than that portrayed in the movie. the continuing business of proclaiming the good news to those who do not know God and for carrying out the imperatives of the gospel. Carrying out that good news, carrying out those directives, loving our neighbors as ourselves, people loving people, bringing about justice and peace, providing for those in need, Jesus delighted in taking ordinary, everyday people and making great things out of them. Those who did not seem to possess great qualifications or credentials and calling them to become his disciples. He does the same for us, and he's doing it now. And the Holy Spirit makes available to all of us the need to be successful as we remain faithful to Jesus, 
faithful to the mission of Jesus Christ. He sends us out into the world proclaiming a word of salvation to a dying world, helping heal a broken people, being Jesus, dirty dozen, to the generation in which we live. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.